The Grand Rapids Public Museum has been a treasure in our community since its founding in 1854, which is the same time the museum began collecting artifacts and specimens to preserve for education, present and future. Since its inception, the museum has collected more than 250,000 artifacts and specimens covering history, science and culture. Most impressively, approximately 98% of the museum's collections has been donated by the community, a rarity in museum collections. The furniture collection is just one area of what the museum preserves with around 1,500 pieces that showcase iconic and innovative furniture designs created right here in Grand Rapids over time and continuing to collect into the future. Thanks to a generous grant from the Furniture Manufacturers Heritage Advice Fund, the Grand Rapids Public Museum was able to research, catalog, and photograph over 500 pieces of its world-class furniture collection. That is more than one-third of the total 1,500 pieces. All images and information published through this grant are stored at GRPM collections.org under a Creative Commons Zero or Free Culture Works license. This means students, teachers, scholars, and researchers, collectors, or anyone can access and make use of it anywhere, anytime, for free. I am Lyman Parks Jr. and I serve on the Grand Rapids Public Museum's Board of Trustees board of directors as chair of the board of art and museum commission and on the museum's collections committee where we oversee the collecting and preservation strategies of the museum in adherence to the accreditation standards of the american association of museums thank you for joining us today i'm dale robertson president of the grand rapids public museum and welcome to this year's collections and cocktail fundraiser in support of the grand rapids public museum's collections their preservation and education with the artifacts and specimens this year we focus on the world famous furniture collection the museum's furniture collection is one of the largest and most unique furniture collections in the nation we will be exploring pieces from this collection, showcasing how Grand Rapids became known as Furniture City, a legacy which not only continues today, but the innovation of furniture is as much alive today as it was in history. When it was created in 1876, this elaborate bedstead by Berkey and Gay Company could only have been made in Grand Rapids, or perhaps Grand Rapids was the only place that could make it affordably. By using the latest techniques and equipment, Grand Rapids furniture companies were able to make fashionable furniture affordable to middle-class consumers, one of the keys to their success. It is important to note that this fundraiser has been a community effort with direction and input, mirroring how the museum's collections being donated by the community is standing because of all of you. This year we are excited to add 20 pieces to the museum's furniture collection. That brings our collection up to date as part of our goal of contemporary collecting. Contemporary collecting is acquiring objects today for the education of tomorrow, for future generations to learn and study the past. Thank you to this year's collections and cocktails sponsors, the Steve and Amy Van Andel Foundation, Custer, Mercantile Bank of Michigan, Steelcase, Bellwith Keeler Decor Solutions, Hayworth, Irwin Seating Company, Canary Consulting, New Holland Brewing, Williams Kitchen and Bath, and our media sponsor, 13 On Your Side. Thank you for being with us this evening. The legacy of furniture making continues in Grand Rapids, supporting both the ways we work and learn. Thanks to a grant from the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs and the support of Steelcase and Custer, the museum has been able to transform their classrooms into state-of-the-art learning spaces for schools that visit for educational programs. The museum has served over 150,000 students in the last five years alone. The Grand Rapids Public Museum respects, values, and honors the unique attributes, characteristics, and perspectives that make each person who they are. We strive to prioritize both physical and cognitive accessibility in all programming, designing experiences that are inclusive to the broadest range of people in the communities we serve. 
We bring this perspective to our exhibit design, K-12 educational programming, public events, and to the ways we welcome visitors on a daily basis. The museum, through funding and support provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, Steelcase and Custer, were able to update all five of our classrooms to enhance the educational experiences and make the spaces more accessible. These updates will have a significant impact on the students who spend time learning at the museum and will ensure that learners of all abilities are welcomed and can be successful. Through this classroom update, we collaborated with many organizations that conducted site evaluations and offered guidance on accessibility and universal design for learning, including disability advocates of Kent County, Grand Valley State University Occupational Therapy, Hope Network, and Calvin University. We've selected all of the classroom components, from furniture to color palettes to technology, with three things in mind, physical accessibility, teaching and learning strategies, in creating an atmosphere of curiosity. Updates include modular tables that are accessible for learners that use wheelchairs, chairs with adjustable armrests, portable lecterns for teachers, projectors, and AV control boxes to allow easy connectability for visiting teachers. Now, I wanna give a big thank you to our Cocktails and Collections Committee for all the time and hard work they have put into this fundraiser not just this year, but over the last two years. It wouldn't be collections and cocktails without the cocktails. It's only noon. Check out your email to join me for happy hour later today with a complete cocktail recipe. The grandfather clockwork Ricky. My name is Dan West. I'm a studio manager in North America at Hayworth Incorporated. Hayworth's been making furniture for 75 years. Well, you could say that we've had many Firsts. If you go way back, the probably the most famous is a technological innovation, what we commonly call cubicles. So Hayworth is excited to have donated to the permanent collection of Marcel Wander's tulip chair. You'll see that he does employ a deep sense of joy in his entire collection. But also the second experience that you have when you sit in the chair is you realize that you actually have a lot of user control over your immediate surroundings. You have a lot of versatility in, in your sense of either connection to community or isolation. When you look at an object, like a piece of furniture, you know that the context was there and the reason that those things were developed is primarily for human interaction. What I'd hope is that we can continue and contribute to that conversation. Grand Rapids always has been just through the furniture industry and all the iconic elements that came from here, a confluence of ideas. And I think that's why Grand Rapids continue to be proud and utilize things like the museum here to maintain that curiosity. Hi, I'm Mark Custer, Chief Revenue Officer for the Custer family of companies. Custer was founded in 1981. My dad started Custer as the local furniture dealership here in Grand Rapids. We are a Steelcase authorized reseller. Our main job is to take the Steelcase research and insights and apply those products to everyday working environments. So this work from home collection that we donated is really a part of the Public Museum's newer collection to show the story of how furniture has evolved over the last 50 years. It's just a nice piece that shows where we are today with how people work. And then we also were able to participate in supplying two state-of-the-art classrooms here at the museum with state-of-the-art learning and education furniture. We're in this really cool stage where a lot of people are rethinking how they want to work and when they want to work. It's a time where we can look out into the future and figure out what the office is going to look like. And you'll see a lot of products that look more residential. 
I think we have an opportunity to really create the office of the future, and a lot of those ideas will come out of Grand Rapids. Hello, my name is Todd Folkert. I'm with uh, Bold Furniture, and I am the owner and CEO of the business. Bold Furniture has been around since uh, 1999. We started in Muskegon, Michigan. And what we talk about at the business is really the purpose of our business is enriching lives through creative furniture solutions. And that enrichment of lives, we look at how are we enriching the lives of our employees, how do we enrich the lives of our customers, and how are we enriching the lives of the community. So the pieces that we have on display at the Collections and Cocktails event are part of our Juxtapose collection and the Bold One collection and then also Ready Able. You know, where we're at today is an incredibly exciting time and we see tremendous opportunities ahead of us because we're very social creatures and furniture will continue to support that and uh, you know, we'll find ways to incorporate technology and uh, you know, do it in a sustainable, environmentally conscious manner. Hello, my name is Kurt Martin. I'm the Chief Creative Officer for Landscape Forms based in Kalamazoo, Michigan. We're the industry leader in site furniture, and we've been in business now 52 years. So Landscape Forms was founded by John Chipman Sr. John was a landscape architect, and their projects were seasonal. So every year, he would have to find really great people, and then in the wintertime, he'd have to basically let them go or lay them off. So he found that by making furniture, it was a wonderful opportunity to keep his staff employed full time. So the pieces that we have on display at the museum are the Harvest Table and the Americana Adirondack Chair. And we're super excited about these products. The HDPE plastic material you see on both the Americana Chair and the Harvest Table, those are made out of recycled milk jugs and plastic containers. And if you look at the products, you'll find that the scale is a little larger than what you might find in a residential application, because for public space, we need to be sure that it's easy to get into and out of, no matter what shape or size you are. We hope more and more people understand the importance and value of the outdoor space and how that affects your human experience and how important that is for your human experience. We understand how important it is for people to connect and for people to connect outdoors. We are an outdoor furniture company and always will be. We're committed to the outdoor landscape. My name is Jake Hansen and I'm a third year student at Kendall College of Art and Design. So the school was founded on furniture and has continued to have a furniture design program. Behind me is the work of quite a few of our students in the furniture program. Uh, it was all for a project where we envisioned the future of work at home in light of the pandemic over the last year. We all took our own different spin and then created a one six scale model that accurately represented what we designed both in materials, scale, and potential use. I designed a, a desk system, the Horizon desk system. So it was a desk, printer cabinet, and then multiple accessories that could fit both the desk itself or go and essentially be modular with other existing desks to make the workflow more fluid for the user. The success story for Kendall is the designers that come out of the school and they all go out and influence the, the industry in their own unique ways, whether they're designing hardware or corporate office systems. Everyone's gonna need a, a dining table, a bed, so furniture's going to stick around. It's just going to be how it changes with trends, everyday use. We've had a bit of a wrench thrown in it this last year with more people working from home. So just adapting to the ever-changing environments of living situations and, and work environments. My name is Jeff Miller. I work at Grand Rapids Chair Company and I am the president. Circa 1870, the original Grand Rapids Chair was founded uh, and family owned and operated until about 1950. My dad and mom and uh, myself, we had a business called Manufacturers Resource. We had the vision of starting our own brand. So circa 2000, we changed our name to the Grand Rapids Chair Company.
So our table uh, is uh, probably one of the uh, greatest sources of corporate pride at Grand Rapids Chairs. Um, so we brought a uh, Dillon product, a communal table uh, made of North American white oak. We also have our Opla outdoor bar stool. So we have our brook seating products. We have our hula chair. The Ferdinand uh, is a chair that uh, we gave to the permanent collection. And then uh, our Andy Lounge, uh, we also donated to the permanent collection. As I reflected, why is uh, furniture important to Grand Rapids? Long before we were Beer City, we were Furniture City, and that goes back hundreds of years, frankly. Yeah. And it's uh, uh, still today a, a thriving industry that employs thousands and thousands of people. And without the, the economic impact of uh, uh, a lot of businesses, just like Grand Rapids Chair, Grand Rapids wouldn't be as vibrant as it is today. My name is Jean Marie Murphy and I work at Steelcase and I'm the Vice President of Sales for the East Business Group and Federal Government Solutions. The Steelcase has been making office furniture since 1912. Much of office furniture was designed and manufactured in wood. At the time, people were smoking cigarettes in the workplace, so cigarettes and wood waste baskets were not a very safe combination. Our first product introduction was the metal waste basket. And it really set Steelcase off on a future for studying work and how people work. And that has really been our legacy to today, is an insight-driven company that just has a natural curiosity passion for designing products that best support how people work. So we have two different suites on display. One is from the 1950s, and the other is a present day application that might be uh, pertinent for somebody that's working at home. The current day application is much more adjustable and ergonomic. When we think about the future of furniture, we really have to think about what's the future of the office. And I think that has been something that we have thought a lot about over this past year. This pandemic has given Steelcase um, the opportunity to really reflect on the changing nature of work as we've seen so many people working from home. It's important that furniture provide a place for people to be safe and feel safe when they're in the office. Furniture can also help to create a sense of belonging in a community after people have been working from home for 14 months, coming back into an environment where they can socialize and sit down comfortably with other people, talk about their work is important. We focus on studying work, workers, and the workplace, and then design a comprehensive portfolio of furniture, architecture, and technology. Rob Birch, President and CEO of Kindle Grand Rapids. We are a luxury provider at the highest end of the market. We produce product that comes from wood and we handcraft it into these beautiful pieces of functional art. No two pieces are exactly the same based on the handcrafted processes that we use. So the furniture that we have on display here today represents all of our brands, Kindle, Cargus, and Council. And through these brands, you can see the diversity of the product that we build every day. You'll see here a wide variety of different styles. Uh, Kindle has a license program with the Dorothy Draper Company in New York. The Cargus brand is French and Italian in its design, so it offers a nice complement to the Kindle brand. Finally, the Council brand is more transitional in its design. Kindle Grand Rapids has built the company on, on our ability to make complex furniture. We take those skills and we adapt those skills to create furniture that the market wants to see today. What makes me most proud about Kindle is the transition from developing this amazing skill and capability and then as time has gone on, we've been able to apply it not just to traditional design, but to a broad range of 
residential furniture designs, and office furniture designs. My name is Kendra Shuayeski, and I am a product designer at Bell with Keeler Decor Solutions. Bell with Keeler has been around for a long time. We've actually been around since 1893 was when Keeler was started right here in Grand Rapids. Here at Collections and Cocktails, we're displaying a little bit about our hardware design process. On this side, we have more of a historic design process. So looking back at maybe what we were doing in 1893 when we started, it's got a lot more hand modeling. Some of these sketches are so fine and precisely detailed that it's just really phenomenal to look at. On the other side, we have a little more of what's going on currently. So a lot more technology that we're using in really cutting edge ways. We still do hand sketching, so we're still markers, pencils, on paper, sketching out those ideas, but then it goes right into the computer and we're digitally modeling, and then we're even still hand modeling, but then we're 3D scanning. So we're really trying to incorporate that legacy of handwork, but bringing it into today's technology. Furniture is so important to Grand Rapids because it, it really is what put us on the map. Being someone who was born and raised here and grew up here, it's something that's such a rich part of our history. And it's something that, especially at Keeler, people will say, you say, oh, I work at Keeler. And they say, oh, my grandparents worked there or this, that, and the other person. Someone always knows someone who was related to the industry. Well, I'm Wynn Irwin. My real name is Earl Irwin. Irwin Seating Company is a manufacturer of auditorium, theater chairs, and telescopic seating. We're 114 years old, and the original company was founded by three Irwin brothers. Our seating goes in schools, it goes in movie theaters, it goes in stadiums, it goes in performing arts centers, it goes in places of worship, really any place where they want a, a fixed seat. What we've got on display are two stadium chairs. One comes from Yankee Stadium. The one right next to it is from uh, Whitecaps Park here in Grand Rapids. And then we have two Performing Arts Center chairs. Another one we pulled from your collection, which is from Carnegie Hall. And then next to that is of what was in DeVos Hall when it was uh, originally installed. Then we have two school type chairs. One has got a tablet arm on it, which is very, very popular, obviously, in schools. And another one is for like a Performing Arts Center, which is extremely popular in all of our high schools now, and that comes from Hudsonville High School here. And then the last chair, which is really cool, uh, is right from Studio C, right downtown here. It's a, a recliner. In 2014, we were confronted with a very interesting situation in the movie theater industry. Uh, we'd been making chairs for it. We, we were one, one of the leaders and, for years and years. And then they started putting in recliners, and we weren't sure whether they would put in this chair that was so much more expensive and you'd get so many fewer seats in an auditorium that we, we sort of delayed, kind of waiting to see what was gonna happen. Well, we missed it and we made a mistake. So then we tried to figure out, well, how do we get into it? Because we wanted to stay in the movie theater industry. And so what we did was we started from scratch and started manufacturing our own chairs starting in, in 2014. We started with one recliner and then that, and that was good. So we did a second one, then a third one, and then a fourth one. And we doubled our business uh, two years in a row and continued to climb with it. And today, we're the leader now in it. Quality of our product has been absolutely spectacular and uh, it was quite a success story. When you, you think about starting from scratch with design, manufacturing, coordination, warehousing, and meeting all those demands of all those customers and they were very demanding. Wow. What a fabulous story from the beginning of the museum's furniture collection through the innovation of furniture companies of today. The museum is proud to collect, preserve, and educate using our furniture collection and to celebrate it with you now. We are excited to continue preserving and using these objects to spark curiosity in our community. I'm Megan Radecki, and I serve on the Grand Rapids Public Museum Board of Trustees. The museum has always been a special place, and I would like to share the story of Eric Schroeder product designer for Bold Furniture and graduate of Kendall College of Art and Design. My name is Eric Schrader. I work for Bold Furniture in Muskegon, Michigan, and I am the on-staff product designer. 
I think my inspiration to get into furniture design has kind of been a lifelong thing. I've always been pretty passionate about uh, beautiful spaces and objects. Growing up as a kid in Grand Rapids and going to the Grand Rapids Public Museum really sparked my curiosity in the history of furniture and furniture design. I remember this big section about the history of the furniture industry in Grand Rapids. And I remember seeing all these photos of logs coming down the Grand River and showing how it gets transformed from raw lumber to the beautiful pieces of furniture that you see around you. So when I was a kid, I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. I don't even know if I would have been aware of furniture design as a profession if it wouldn't have been for the exhibits that I saw growing up here. Investing in the public museum is a worthwhile way to invest in the future of our community. I don't think that I would be doing what I am today without the background and history that the Grand Rapids Public Museum gave me growing up. It is so great to hear your story, Eric. And this is just one of the many ways the museum is impacting our community. Now, it is my privilege to invite you to be a part of this wonderful community impact. You can play a part by joining me in making a gift to the Grand Rapids Public Museum. Financial gifts at any dollar amount are a great way to contribute to creating curiosity. You can make a one-time gift, a monthly gift, like I do, or even a legacy donation. A gift of $2,500 or $209 per month allows the museum to clean over 1,500 pieces of furniture in the museum's collection. Can you imagine dusting all that furniture? A gift of $1,000 or $84 per month provides supplies for students in chair camp to use elements of design to create miniature chair forms of their very own. A gift of $500 supports the photography and research of one furniture piece in the museum's collection and adds to the online database to be viewed worldwide. A gift of $250 contributes to the transportation costs for a tour of the museum's furniture collection for one school. And finally, a gift of $100 supports the cost of one online educational lesson led by a museum educator using the museum's collection of artifacts. There are many ways the museum can, with your help, make a meaningful impact on those interacting with the GRPM. In addition to financial gifts, consider volunteering at the museum, becoming a committee member, or donating furniture or other objects to the GRPM collections. Please take a moment to consider your donation and how you want to be involved in supporting the Grand Rapids Public Museum. Make your gift today online at grpm.org impact. That's grpm.org impact. For those that have given a gift today or are current museum supporters, we are so grateful for your investment. Thank you all for joining us for virtual collections and cocktails.